You know what, this is really fascinating. We are in Ilford North, that is East East London. This is a Labour seat. The local MP is actually the Shadow Health Secretary, where streeting the kind of arch Blairite. But Leanne Mohammed is a British Palestinian, just 23, and she's standing in an independent campaign, and she's trying to give Wes Streeting a run for his money. Does she have a chance? This should just be in the bag for the Labour Party. The Conservatives came second last time, and I think we all know what's happening to the Tories. They are in total meltdown at the moment. So it should just be a massive landslide here for the local Labour Party. But will it be? Is Leanne Mohammed's grassroots campaign is it cutting through on issues, of course, like Gaza, nationally Labour backed Israel's onslaught, Keir Starmer at the very beginning backed Israel's right to commit war crimes. How much is that an issue? Is it just about Gaza or is it about other issues as well? Could this be an upset? And what does it say about politics, disillusionment and what happens next in Britain? We've got a lot to find out. We're going to go out knocking on doors of Liam Mohammed. We're going to get the general vibe. Let's see what we find. Uh, it's just another election, if I'm honest. Um, not that excited. <laughs> um, just hoping, you know, whoever gets in will actually be genuinely caring about the people. What do you think of Keir Starmer? He ain't bad. He ain't as good as me. Who do you think you vote for? Oh, well, probably independent candidate. I mean, that's that's the thing because most Labour, most Labour voters just don't know really what what the Labour Party stands for again. How did I vote last time? I actually don't think I voted last time, in all honesty, but I'm definitely going to be voting this time around. I feel like people connect better with somebody that they see they can engage with and, you know, they see around and stuff like that. You know, if you don't see somebody around, then, you know, it kind of just feels distant. You're not really going to kind of feel connected to that or relate to that or want to vote for that person. So, so yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so Leanne gets my vote, really, yeah. Tell me about yourself. Tell me how you growing up in Ilford. What was what was that for you as an experience? Yeah, so Ilford is my entire life. I went to primary school here. I went to high school here, sixth form. I was a local youth worker, literally youth centre down the road, um, for a number of years. Was a volunteer at my local food bank and volunteer at my local library as well. Um, I come from a Palestinian background, and you know Ilford is where my parents found home. And it just means so much to have such a wonderful community and it would be a real honour for me to be able to represent it. How would you feel if you were woken every morning by bombs and not birds? How would you feel if you didn't even feel safe in your own home? How would you feel if you witnessed your own family die in front of you? Our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. So let's together all say, Free Palestine. I was 15 years old, did a speech titled Birds Not Bombs, and it won first place in Redbridge. The video went viral, embarrassingly you can st still see it online. But unfortunately, I was subjected to an avalanche of online abusive comments and videos, calling me a 15-year-old suicide bomber, um, an evil anti-Semitic KKK Nazi schoolgirl, and this was just the tip of the iceberg. But I had so much support from people that I didn't know, and with pain comes learning, with the support of my family, my friends, you know, I was determined not to fall. They were not going to win, and it's proved they helped me to be heard as far and beyond as I can imagine. And I continued. Ever since I was 15 years old, I said that nobody would ever silence me, and I will continue to shout louder about the plights of my people. And that's exactly what I've done ever since then. I've continued. I don't actually vote. Oh, you don't? I voted years ago and I was really disappointed with the outcome. So when I saw the YouTube video of Leanne, I thought this time I'm going to make an effort and vote for her. So this is the first time you've ever voted in any election? It'll be second time. Second time? Yeah, yeah. Wow, what was the other time? When Margaret Thatcher was in and I wanted her out. We get that a lot, by the way. A lot of people for the first time ever voting for me. Oh, who've never it? voted before. I've seen her video walking along here and into the uh, school down the bottom. Yeah, There's a Cranbrook centre. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm literally horrified of what's going on. Uh -huh. And I was just saying to my son, I said, I can't believe that the whole world is just sat there and not doing anything. And Keir Starmer, 
I would I expected a lot more from him mm. basically as a human being we can't watch these atrocities being done to children mm. I mean I've got grandchildren yeah, and course. my heart goes out to those people so yeah that's why I'm gonna vote for her um, I used to support Conservative, Labour, you know. Oh, so you voted Conservative before as well? I have, in the past, yeah, yeah I'm not going to lie. <laughs> because it was good for business, you know, and we, I came from a business background. Why not Labour? Why not West Street? Because he said no electricity and no water for people, human beings. Oh, so Keir Starmer's interview about yeah, the uh, Labour leader. It was yeah. awful. It was, LB, it was the LBC. Yeah, so when he said Israel had the right to cut off water and energy yeah, to... Be a human right um, lawyer. A siege is appropriate. Cutting off power, cutting off water. Well, I think that Israel does have that right. It is an ongoing situation. Um, obviously, everything should be done within international law, but I don't want to step away from the sort of core principles that Israel has a right to defend herself. As a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. Mm. You know, why would you say something like that? Isn't he has no excuse because he knows what the law is? Exactly. <laughs> you can't pick and choose who who has a right to live and who doesn't you know and it's it's completely wrong the words that he used and i i do believe that you know i mean i'm born brought i'm, I'm born and brought up in this country i was very proud of my country but the words that he used i feel ashamed of myself mm. you know i don't feel like I feel ashamed of Britain. Why are we not doing something to stop this? And we've been voting Labour for generations. It's kind of been a, a, a thing within the family. Uh, father did, but the other family members do. However, this time round, it's it's very different. We we are move, we've moved away. Not just myself, the family and friends have moved away from voting Labour. But um, really feel strongly about the humanitarian rights of the Palestinian people, uh, and feel like. We've been let down uh, by Labour and the other parties in, in power and we feel that Leanne, you know, will try and make that difference and make our voices heard. Just on that road, guys. <laughs> we'll cross Ooh. over. Perfect. Yeah. So, guys, we'll start on this road? Okay. Perfect. The last election, was you just able to vote? Yeah. So how did you vote? Labour. <laughs> if voters were keen on West Street, what would be your what would be your answer to them? Yeah, I just tell them, what has he done for you? I mean, this is someone who refused to vote for a ceasefire. Um, and we've now seen over 15,000 Palestinian children killed, 19,000 children orphaned. If someone like that can't vote for peace, then why would you want that person anywhere near power? Why would he, what would he do for you here? I just, you know, for me, it's not just about Gaza as well. It's about the NHS. It's about privatisation as well. So, I mean, where's Jason will be that he will be the health secretary yeah. uh, if he wins in this race. Um, the NHS is Labour's proudest achievement. Um, and he says he's going to bring down the waiting lists, put the NHS back on its you know, feet after, NH after the Tories destroyed it. What would you say to that? Well, I would say that you know, he's openly said that he'll open the doors to more NHS privatisation. And that is not the solution to protecting our NHS. People are worried. And I speak to doctors here in Ilford North. I have a health policy analyst team that are helping me on my policies here on the NHS. And the NHS is so important to me because my family work in the NHS yeah. as well. Um, and so West Reading's plans for the NHS are something that worries us all. Yeah. To have this person as our health secretary is something that we definitely don't want. And that's what I'm hearing on the doorstep. People want this person out of power. People are counting on me all around the country to save our NHS right now. No pressure. <laughs>I've been living in this area for 22 years. My, so, my local services are going down here. We had the Tories for 10 years. We had Labour for another 10 years. There's been absolutely no improvement. Not only there's not been an improvement, we're literally going down in every dimension. I mean, talking about long waits for doctors. The NHS is awful. Crime has gone right up. The litter, antisocial behaviour, you name it. Every single problem you could think of, we've got it in this area. No one seems to be addressing it. My gut feeling is that West Streeting is like managing the situation rather than actually fighting for us. But then when the Gaza thing happened, it was just outrageous, absolutely outrageous. I mean, I'm Jewish and I, I've been living here for 22 years and I was just shocked, horrified, 
and absolutely frustrated at Labour's response. What made you so particularly horrified, including what maybe what was treating said or done? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously what Starmer said to start with, but then we, you know, we've been protesting outside West Streeting's office. He never if, ever bothered to come out. And if he did, we obviously would have asked him to clarify how he really thought about things. But we did catch him a couple of times and he said, well, you know, we'll call for a ceasefire at the right time. There's women, children, babies, elderly men being murdered. And oh, we'll call for a ceasefire at the right time. I mean, what is it that they couldn't see that we're seeing? I mean, it's shocking to me. So I'm sorry to say they've obviously got an agenda. Uh, and we don't want to be part of that agenda. We want to take control. It's Wes Streeting's seat, and I'm just very worried about what his plans are. To me, it feels like PFI all over again. Private finance initiative. Yeah, private finance initiative, and um, and I think, and I'm and I'm also, you know, very upset at the way people have been treated within the Labour Party. Um, and I think, I don't know if Leanne will win, I really hope she does win, but I hope that she gives West Streeting a run for his money and I hope that they realise that they really can't treat the progressive part of their party like this and expect us just to just do nothing about it. I just feel independent candidates in this election are going to be really critical because they're going to be, a, I think they're going to be an outsized voice if they win and I think they're going to hold the government to account probably more than any backbench MPs are going to be able to do. I mean, particularly because they've stripped out all the independent voices within the Labour Party. You're now left not just with a, a you know, party that's going to have a landslide, but also a party that's going to have very one-dimensional thinking. So I think having other voices is going to be really critical. One of the challenges you have as an independent is parties have big machines. Yeah. And they have, they can mobilise people, including from all over the country. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how are you, how are you fighting back against that? Because that is a massive advantage for any established party. It makes independence lives very difficult when they stand. Correct. Parties have big machines, but we have people. And my campaign is a people-powered movement. It's a simple grassroots campaign. And you know what? I have even more canvases than we're straighting. Is that so, true? Correct. <laughs> it is. Um, I mean, look, I tell my volunteers all the time that, guys, we can actually walk the streets of Ilford with our heads held high because we stand on the right side of history. We have morality. And... You know, for them, they can't they can't do the same because I don't know why are you supporting a kind of party that you know has abandoned us all, right? Labour has abandoned us, so we are proud to be standing here. We are people. My volunteers are proud to be a part of this campaign. I think that's the difference here. A lot of people go, look, as great as having independence is, there needs to be a national movement. That like parties are big machines, and at the end of the day, it will be at the moment you get a Tory government or you get a Labour government, but actually there's a need for a new political party and obviously there's the greens that exist i don't know what relationship that would have with the greens or if people just join the greens and then that becomes people's homes what do you say about that because at the moment otherwise you're kind of fragmented you've got you you've got pfizer then you've got the greens it's like a random hotpot so what do yeah. we do about that we are fragmented now but i think this is the beginning of something even bigger something that is a new kind of politics that we all want i think this is the beginning of that movement right this independent movement you've got independent standing all around the country and um, it's a new kind of genuine honest compassionate passionate politics that we all want to see and be a part of. And I think none of these parties offer that to us right now. I think um, independent is the way forward. You know what, I was impressed. Independent campaigns are always up against formidable challenges because, you know, if you've got the Labour Party machine, behind you, you're West Streeting, you're on TV, you've got this big profile. Those are really, really big advantages. But she's got cut through. She's got a base of support here. Uh, what will that mean on election day is difficult to know, but she's definitely going to turn out a lot of supporters. And on and off camera, that included people who obviously voted Labour all their lives for generations, people who voted Conservative, people who've never voted before. Uh, that is something, if I were West Streeting, that I would be anxious about. I mean, in theory, he should walk it. It should be a Labour landslide, and it will be a Labour landslide nationally, and that will hugely bolster his chances here. But clearly, he has problems, and that is symbolic of what's happening all over the country, that the Labour Electoral Coalition 
is fragmenting. Large chunks of it are not happy. And I think what will be particularly interesting is what happens when they are in power, because disillusionment will kick in swiftly. There won't be the whole, ooh, you've got to support us because you've got to get the Tories out. That will go, and people will look for leaders. And this extremely charismatic individual is just one of the leaders I think people will end up looking to. So I think whatever happens here on election day, definitely Liam Mohammed, I think someone to watch. Now, uh, we've got loads of election videos to come. Uh, we're going to go all around the country as best we can. Uh, so pl please like, subscribe, leave your comments. Um, help us make these videos at patreon.com forward slash social. Uh, love to hear what you think. Speak to you soon.